When I was young, I had an experience where I almost drowned. It's a memory from a long time ago, but I still remember it vividly, which shows how much of a shock it was for me. My family used to go camping a lot, and we always went to a certain river, which was about a three-hour drive away. Although it was far, the water was clean, the mountains were close, and the scenery was amazing. When our family of four arrived, we first set up the tent and my parents started preparing dinner. My older brother and I decided to play in the river. I was only about five years old at the time, so I put off float and my brother went off to play by himself somewhere. I also moved a little further away to play. Although there were deep parts in the river, I thought the flow was calm and there was no danger. While swimming alone, I felt a strange sensation in my leg. It felt like something was touching my leg and it was sticking to my leg like seaweed even when I moved it. At first, I thought I would just keep playing and ignore it, but the feeling was too unpleasant, so I decided to get out of the river and head for the shore. Then I started feeling that my leg was getting heavier and heavier. I tried to remove whatever was attached to my leg, but I couldn't lift my leg, and my hand couldn't reach it. I couldn't move forward at all, and I became anxious and worried. That's why I decided to ask my family for help. Brother, help me. I shouted several times at the top of my lungs. However, my brother, who was playing nearby, didn't come to me, nor did my parents on the shore. The surroundings were so quiet that they should have heard my voice. And in the next moment, my leg was pulled sharply, and I fell into the river. At that moment, I saw what was attached to my leg. It looked like a person melting away, and the part that was holding my leg looked like a human hand, which made me recognize it as a person. I have no memory of what happened after that. All I know is that I drowned and was taken to the hospital by an ambulance, and I was unconscious for three days in the intensive care unit, which worried my family. When I told my parents and brother about the incident and why I drowned, they didn't believe me at all. Since then, I haven't played in the river while camping. Even now, when I hear about people drowning, I remember that something that had melted away and I shudder. Do you know a bullfrog? It's not like a tree frog, it's small and cute. An old man from the countryside told me it was a frog because it cried so loudly and sounded like a cow. In such a rural neighborhood there was a river where many frogs lived. When you think of rivers in the countryside, you tend to imagine clean water with a shiny surface, but this river was filled with domestic wastewater. The water level is low and if it does not rain regularly, the river will soon give off an unpleasant odor. That's the so-called ditch river. Living in such a river, the fierce looking frog somehow resembled a monster and its cry that echoed at night was frightening. It became a regular occurrence for me to go to my grandfather's house during the summer vacation and that year I went to stay for a while as usual. I think it was halfway through my stay. After the fireworks at night, my father said he was going to a nearby vending machine for alcohol, so I followed him. The vending machine needs to cross the ditch and approach the big road. The ground is pretty paved, but the river is overgrown with grass and there are very few street lights, so it's a path where you won't want to walk too far at night. I am walking side by side with my father, and as I approach the river, I hear the low croak of a frog. While I thought it was a dirty cry, when I looked into the dark river, something seemed to be swimming in the light leaking from the houses. I thought it was a jumping frog, so I took a closer look. I called out to my father and asked him to take a look, but when I took my eyes off him for a moment, the puffy thing was gone. It was a polluted river, so I was told I must have misunderstood the grass or something. I bought alcohol and juice, came back, came back to the same place and looked at the river, but still no fur. Thinking I might be wrong, I crossed the bridge and was surprised to hear a frog croaking at my feet. If it was a little further away, I would step on it. In the end, the day passed without incident, but the next day the adults were making a lot of noise. A body was found in the same ditch, 
but it is strange to commit suicide in such a dry river. Somehow he said something like murder. By the way, the fluffy thing I saw back then was the head of a corpse, and I'm still a little scared to think that the culprit who moved it was next to the corpse. Is that furry thing a new species of frog, a ghost, or a corpse? I visited an ancient temple in the mountainous area of the Chubu region during the autumn leaf season. I arrived at the temple with my three-year-old daughter and mother and child happily driving and started climbing the road leading to the temple gate. Passing through the historical Nyaman, along the stairs that lead to the main hall, a gentle, thin river flows. The approach to the ancient temple is lined with rock and statues, and it is said that there is always something that resembles an acquaintance among the rock and statues. In front of each Arhat statue wearing a red hat or a baby hat, Randasiru, fruit offerings, alcohol, cigarettes, etc. are placed in a mess, and there are quite a few new items. Having visited this temple many times since I was a child, I never gave much thought to those offerings. The stream, bathed in the autumn sunshine, glistened and carried fallen leaves, and the little girl was happily climbing the gentle slope. I started stacking them carefully. At that time, it was at the end of the aisle, and it wasn't a place that would block the passage of other tourists, so I let them do as they pleased. It was a warm afternoon and I was looking at my daughter for a while. Then, I found that there are four piles of seven sheets each. Her daughter said suddenly, What day, day? I wondered what a child who didn't even know the multiplication table would say. It's okay if you don't force yourself to eat at all. I didn't hear what her daughter was saying to the river, so I picked her up and rolled back to her parking lot and made my way down. The 7th and the 49th are days from funerals to memorial services. After 49 years, he will become a Buddha. No, there's no way my three-year-old daughter knows that. Besides, what is he all? Was there something imaginary on the leaves? Or do you eat the leaves themselves? Involuntarily, I imagined something that came up from the river and stretched out its hand. Was that something satisfied with the leaves her daughter provided? Who owns the randasiru that was offered to the Arhat statue? What happened to the owner of the hand-knitted baby hat on the Arhat's head? I suddenly started to worry about things that I hadn't thought about before. Maybe it would have been better to have completed the Seven Mountains? Should I have been exorcised at the main hall? Questions still swirl around.